Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the November Sky Tour. We're gonna to check out some constellations, some binocular targets, and a telescopic challenge. Also, imagining the constellations as the Kardashians? You betcha, right after this. <laughs> In my effort to make astronomy and Greek mythology a little more relatable and easier to remember, I call this next segment, Keeping Up with the Constellations. I'm sorry. So if we imagine Cassiopeia, the ancient vain queen, as Kris Jenner, <laughs> ancient, she has bragged that her daughter Andromeda, Kim Kardashian, is the most beautiful in all the land, even more than the sea nymphs. This outrageous Poseidon, the god of the sea, or the rest of us in this case, and he sends a sea monster, Cetus, to destroy the kingdom and cancel the show. So, they say, wait, 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 wait a second, maybe we can come to some sort of a deal, and they chain Kim to a rock, and the sea monster will think of it as a giant sea toilet that's going to swallow her phone and erase all of her Instagram content is on the way when the hero, Perseus, in this case, Kanye West, is there to save everybody, hallelujah, you know, his new gospel album, Saves the Day, slays the sea monster, and marries Kim. And that is your episode of Keeping Up with the Constellations. I'm sorry. Okay, man, time to go to the star chart. We're gonna see what we can see with just the unaided eye, then binoculars, then a telescope, then a telescopic challenge. Okay, so here we go. If we point this, so north is north, and the center is overhead. This is gonna give us a pretty good view of what's going on in the sky. And let's build on our previous knowledge here. We're gonna uh, check out the Pleiades, will be the little kite, the little misty kite rising in the east right here. So below that, we have the constellation Taurus, the bright reddish star there, Aldebaran, is the easiest uh, little milestone to see right there, a little, little indicator. And, have a really nice little star cluster right here if you point your binoculars there as well. Um, in the south, we have Cetus the sea monster, and he is looming out of the mark to destroy Andromeda, but there's Kanye West, or Perseus, here to save the day. Cassiopeia is a little W or M looking thing, the vain queen, Kris Jenner, right up there. The Andromeda galaxy is pretty much high overhead, as is in the Great Square of Pegasus, or Aaron, the supersonic horse, as we have dubbed him over here. There's some dim stars in this area. This would be Pisces, the fish, Aquarius, the water bearer. Neptune's hanging out around there, although you can't see it with just your eye. Right there, we have the brightest star rising over here is Capella in the constellation Auriga. And we're gonna be returning to this in a moment with our binocular tour, because there's some really cool open clusters right in there. Uh, Polaris North Star over there in the north, where it should be. And the Summer Triangle starting to sink in the west. That's your sky tour. And now let's get into the binocular tour. So we're gonna start with what we know, in this case, the Pleiades. So we're gonna aim our binoculars right there and take in the magnificence of the diamonds on the heavens right there. Now we're going to move pretty much directly overhead, and there's going to be the Andromeda Galaxy, M31, which we learned about in a previous video, too, if you need more help finding that. We have the Great Square of Pegasus. This is going to be a great landmark for what we're trying to do. And off the leftmost corner here, we have the constellation Andromeda. Okay, so here's our first binocular challenge object of the evening. After we found M31 right here, we're going to go about equidistant on the lower side of Andromeda, and we're gonna look for a slightly hazy part of the sky. It's gonna look like there might be some fog on your lens or something, it's very faint. And if the sky is dark, you should be able to pick it up with binoculars. Uh, if not, probably not. But this is M33 or the Pinwheel Galaxy, also a galactic neighbor, so to speak. Pretty cool stuff to see right there. We're gonna be checking that out with a telescope later. But again, you want to be away from city lights for that. Always worth a try, but if you can't find it, no worries. If you go a little farther down, you have the constellation Aries the Ram, and there's a real nice double star right there through a telescope. Okay, so back to Andromeda. We're going to follow the line of Andromeda. Looks like she's reaching out towards Perseus the hero, or Kanye West in our earlier story, <laughs> keeping up with the constellations right here. Now, you might notice, if I zoom in on this a little bit, that there's a weird symbol on the star chart. Agal, also known as the Demon Star, is a variable star, and he freaked out the ancients because he would change in brightness. They didn't know what the heck was going on. 
So sometimes it's bright and sometimes it's not. That's why it has two circles around it. The size of the star on the star chart is usually explaining the star magnitude or brightness to us. But if we go to this star right here, he's always that brightness. And about halfway between this star and this little W here, Cassiopeia, there's a beautiful sight, the double cluster, great binoculars or telescopes. And you can just barely see it with your eyes, a little hazy patch in the winter Milky Way. So just sweep your binoculars up and see if you see, it's a very uncreative name. Uh, see if you can come up with a better name, but it's just two star clusters together. It's just gorgeous. One of my favorite sights in the heavens. Now we're gonna sweep on down here. You'll notice this really bright star, Capella, will be rising. It looks like a plane sometimes. It's really hard to miss. Sort of this zone, almost looks like a pentagon in the sky, a squished one. One, two, three, okay, well, maybe not exactly a pentagon, but if you leave those guys out, I guess. If you sweep your binoculars through the lower part of it, you might notice these little, they almost look like um, little, little teeny little clouds. And if you look real close, you'll notice that they're just made of stars. So three open clusters, M37, M36, and M38. And M35 is probably a little bit too low to see until a little later in the evening. So see if you can sweep those up while you're at it. Just beautiful. And then finally swing your binoculars back almost where you started and check out this wonderful star cluster here in the constellation Taurus. So just zooming back out again, we're going to start at the Pleiades, go up to M31, drop down, try to see the pinwheel galaxy M33, go over to the double cluster, and then finally these three open clusters right here. Let me know if you have any questions, and then it's time for the telescope. Okay, and here's some for all you telescope folks. Let's check out M33 again. So you'll find that now, it's not super easy to find because it's so diffuse. It's a pretty large extended object and it really gets washed out by light pollution. But if you're under dark skies, a lot of people can see it with an unaided eye and definitely in binoculars. So point your scope at M33 and you'll note, you might see a little clump of brightness on the north side of it. I've got a little finer chart for you that isn't super useful, but if that little haze is M33, it would be right about there. Uh, if you're using a reflector, sometimes it would be inverted and the refractor would be inverted a different way. But if you scan around, you're looking for a little knot in the brightness. And that is NGC 604, an H2 region or ionized hydrogen, a giant cloud of gas. It's like a really big Orion Nebula in another galaxy. Uh, let me know what kind of scope you can see it with. I use a 12 and a half inch reflector from a fairly dark site and was able to, it was very obvious with that for deep sky stuff. But I think you could see it under worse conditions with a smaller scope. Let me know what you find. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions. Love chat and astronomy. It doesn't matter what kind of gear you're using or what kind of skies you're under. Get out and stare into the abyss. It's awesome. You'll be all the better for it. Clear skies to you and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.